The programme tonight in our uh, basement studio, uh, down the other side of the Palace of Glittering Delights tonight, are uh, the Porcupine Tree. Steve, are you there? Hello, Mark. Hi, how are you doing? All right, mate. Uh, for people who don't know the Porcupine Tree, and God knows there can't be many, but for people who don't, how, well, you know, introduce the Porcupine Tree in half a sentence. What, the line-up or the principle behind the project? The, the, go on, the principle behind the project. The principle behind the project is to drag progressive rock kicking and screaming into the 90s. Right, that says it all, I think. We'll meet everybody later, but okay. uh, what are you going to play for us first? We're going to start off with Radioactive Toy. Brilliant. Okay, take it away.
Brilliant. Radioactive toy. First one performed live in session tonight by uh, the Porcupine Tree. Uh, the Porcupine Tree, who are downstairs in our drama studio, and uh, they're back now with Burning Sky, part one.
it okay to talk now? Sure is. Okay. Porcupine Tree, uh, playing live. Burning Sky, part one. And we're actually talking halfway through the song, really, aren't we, Steve? We are. That's a bit of a monster, that one. Right, okay. Are you going to play the second half after we that? We are indeed, yeah. Just, right. just a moment, yeah. Okay, so we won't talk very long, then we'll get back to the, uh, back to the song. Um, we said that, uh, you know, you introduced the band before, so it's the acceptable face of uh, prog rock, dragging it, kicking and screaming into the 90s. It yeah. can now be revealed who you are, because for a long time I've been playing Porcupine Tree records on the radio. And I couldn't say who you were because you were in another band, but now we can. Indeed. Well, it's no great secret, really, but I have been within 50 paces of a drum machine. So it's true, yes. Right. So you're, you're in No Man? I am in No Man, yes. And, you're yeah. in, uh, and you still are in No Man? I still am, yeah. We've just finished a new album and that'll be out in the spring, so... Right, right. So Porcupine Tree sort of runs side by side with that. Who's, who's in the band? Because this is the first time Porcupine Tree has been a live act, isn't it, really? That's right, yes. I've just put this band together. Um, I'll just give you a, an introduction to the band members. We've got Chris Maitland on drums, who I've stolen from No Man's live band. Right. Colin Edwin on bass, and the Liberace of Lewisham himself, Richard Barbieri on keyboards. Right, ex-Japan. That's right, yes. As, as uh, like, you played a uh, session with No Man on Radio 5, and Richard and the rest of the Japan boys played. And I remember that night, we had to wait to, for you to go on because Millwall versus Arsenal went to penalties. Yeah. Wasn't that right? And I think it's the same draw, isn't it, Richard? That's right, yeah. Same draw in the next one. Right, you got his microphone on. Right, yeah, no, we can hear him. That's you right. can hear him, can you? So you played the first time, you played at uh, High Wycombe uh, recently, sort of debut gig, so how did that go? Very well, yes. Uh, we, we rammed it and uh, we played a bit of a stormer, by right. all accounts, yeah. Right, and you're playing in London soon? Yes, um, we're playing at the Borderline tomorrow, which is the only London show for the, basically, until we go out on tour, right. maybe again uh, early next year. Right. But people should come to that, yeah. Yep, so, I mean, you're yep. playing like smaller venue. I mean, in some ways, it sounds like kind of the music that should fill football stadiums in a way, doesn't it? Would you like to sort of play on a big stage with, you know, inflatable dinosaurs and pigs and ladies? Absolutely. And well, well the, our ambition, of course, is to have Richard in a cloak. Right. And have him actually rising out of the stage with, uh, <laughs> with lights revolving and, you know. Yeah. I mean, rising right out of the arena. Roger Dean backdrops and all that, well, you know. I mean, you know, th there seems to be something of a kind of prog rock revival in some quarters, but for some people it's kind of something that should never be allowed to return. I mean, it, it did become for a long time a discredited thing due to kind of, well, certain people in the uh, lower escapes who shall remain nameless, but his initials are Rick <laughs> Wakeman. <laughs> it's like Journey to the Centre of the Earth on Ice. I mean, you know, is it, is it worth reviving as a concept? I think so. I think particularly, I mean, progressive rock has always been about absorbing new technology, in my, in my opinion, anyway. And I think that's the mistake that people have been making over the last 10 to 15 years if they've, if they've not been taking the new technology on board, which is what we've been trying to do, um, tr to be truly progressive in the true sense of the word. Right, right. Uh, you, just before you play the next thing, obviously mm. we're going to do a thing in the last half hour. Frank Zappa sadly died at the weekend. I mean, do you regard him as one of the sort of uh, founding fathers of prog rock? Because he certainly was like keen on innovation and technology and all the things you've talked about. Very much so, yes. I think he was a, a true progressive rocker in the sense that he, he mixed all sorts of styles of music. That, uh, you know, jazz, avant-garde, classical, I'm sure you'll be talking about all this later, but, uh, yes, yes, a true, a true progressive rocker, I think. A hero of yours? I, mean... uh, I wouldn't go that far, no. no. Not in the Dave Gilmore League, but, uh, Oh, right, Gilmore, is it? Second division hero, maybe, yeah. Right, right, what do you think of the, what do you think of the Floyd without waters? Um, you don't want me to stare, swear on the radio, so I won't tell it. Not very good. Right. Okay. Not very good. Fine, fine. Said it all. All yeah. right. So, uh, do we have to give a sensitive intro? Has it got to build back into full flight now, Bernie? Indeed. Yourself? We're going to pick up where we left this off. This is yeah. on the current album, isn't it? The, the last album you made on Delirium. Up That's the right, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Right. Cheers.
Porcupine Tree uh, performing live in our studio down the other end of the Palace of Glittering Delights. Uh, Burning Sky Park. Studio guests for tonight who are the Porcupine Tree. This is another track from the Up the Down Stair album, Always Never. Yeah, Mark, just before we play this, oh, can, yeah. I, can I, in classic chat show style, get one more plug-in for our Borderline show you tomorrow? I've just done a dead sensitive intro that says, like, you know, <laughs> and there they are, coming back now with Always Never. Hey, Mark, just before we do it, you know, go on then. All right, you do it again and we'll do it. No, well, go on, do the plug first. All right, Borderline show tomorrow, Charing Cross Road, Porcupine Tree, get there about 8.30 to avoid disappointment. Right, OK. Here's Always Never. Right. Oh, no, I was going to do the intro. Go on, then. Right, here they are, back now, live, Porcupine Tree with... Always, never.
Porcupine Tree uh, playing live with Always Never. Uh, see them at the Borderline in London tomorrow night and two excellent albums up the downstair and on the Sunday of Life um, available on Delirium Records. So uh, thank you. This evening making a return to the programme, uh, the Porcupine Tree. Steve. Hi. Oh my God. Flipping egg. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You're reverberating everywhere. So, uh, now, we nearly came so close to a, a, a disaster of stupendous uh, proportions in show business terms, didn't we, this evening? We did, yes. Because um, you lost the drummer. Well, he likes to make a dramatic entrance, so he did leave it till the last minute, to right. say the least. What did he do? I, mean, that, he, I think he spent an hour and a half for egg and chips and nuts and service. That's right, yeah. And <laughs> what did they do? Just do a put us all on edge. Anyway, uh, you have all turned up. The new album is out. Is it actually out next week? Now? It's out in February. This, yeah, that's next Monday. Next Monday. The yeah. sky moves sideways. So you're going to play all stuff from that tonight? All new stuff? Um, mostly, yes. We're right. going to certainly start with a track from that album. Yeah. Okay, well, you, what are you going to play first? For this us? is called The Moon Touches Your Shoulder. Oh, we played this on Thursday from the record. So. Here we go. The Porcupine Tree.
Porcupine Tree, uh, performing live on tonight's programme. Uh, music from the new album, The Sky Moves Sideways, which is out on Delirium next week. Uh, Moon Touches Your Time. Live session guests tonight are The Porcupine Tree, and, uh, well, this is the title track of their new album, which comes out next week on Delirium, The Sky Moves Sideways.
I move sideways. Uh, phase one, uh, Porcupine Tree, title track of the new album. We'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll be continuing with phase two uh, very shortly. Steve? Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, all right. Uh, do the honours, do the introductions. Um, we have Chris Maitland on drums, percussion, uh, Colin Edwin on bass, and the man Savani of Millwall, Richard Barbieri <laughs> on keyboards. Right. So what you've been doing since last, obviously recording the record and everything, but I mean, uh, you do have this uh, the dreaded uh, prog rock tag hanging over you. So does, does that make it mean that converts are kind of, uh, people are nervous about admitting to a love of prog rock reason? Very much so. I mean, if you remembered last time we were on, I did say that our mission was to drag progressive rock kicking and screaming into the 90s. Yeah. Um, that's still very much our mission, although I think even further up the list now is to get a review in queue before we get to our 20th album. Right. <laughs> it's very difficult. I mean, is it, is it, is it hard? I mean, people progressively buying the records in greater numbers, I suppose, with each album that comes out. But what about, uh, gigs? Because it, you know, it, it is like something that works on a, a relatively large scale. It doesn't have to be Wembley, but it needs to be sort of concertos and not the Rat and Anne Shandy and Cleetops, doesn't it, really? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we actually now have a UK agent, which is for the first time we've ever had that, so we're hoping to be able to step up the gigs in the UK. Right. Um, but until now, really, most of the interest has come from Europe as far as live performance is concerned. I mean, they're not so hung up about uh, the tags and things. No, it's it? very much... It's, it's the British press have got this thing about progressive rock, and even... We found that even when we've had positive press, um, it, it, they basically spend 50% of the time apologising for liking the music. Yeah. Which becomes, a, you know, a little tiresome. I mean, I know it, it, another old friend of this programme, uh, Nick Solomon, the Bevis Fron, mm. uh, like, doesn't sound like you, but he gets branded prog rock as well, and I think has uh, suffered for years, of course. I suppose uh, so did the uh, Oswick Tentacles and people like that in their early days. It finally broke through, I suppose. I think so. I think it's partly due to the fact that there, ha there have been a lot of bands around who have used the progressive rock sort of tag as a pure purely kind of nostalgia trip yeah. and I think that's given it a bit of a bad name yeah. um, I'm thinking of some of the bands from the early 80s particularly yeah um, so it's difficult to convince people that you can play progressive rock and be very contemporary yeah. and if you like be progressive in the true sense of the word yeah right okay now remember the other thing I remember about you being last uh, on last time is that uh, during one of the numbers you hit an absolutely spectacular bomb note it, it's become famous it was fantastic you should release that version because it wasn't just that <laughs> you went into the blistering guitar solo on the wrong note and then there was this <laughs> agonized howl well, a lot, of people, a lot of people did assume that was you, actually, Mark, but I have to put it on the record now, being on the air, that that was me, and I was aware 
<laughs> of the honker I played. Ah, that was good. Yeah. In fact, there is a little mini CD thing that goes around, which is of uh, Vinnie Riley, Jurutti Column, playing with Morrissey. That's right, Who yeah. hits a spectacular bum note, and the whole thing just falls apart, and it's a much treasured recording. So yes. Uh, anyway, right, well, it's nice to have you here again, and uh, are you going to continue with uh, Sky Moves Sideways? Yeah, I should just uh, explain to your listeners out there that um, this, this piece that we're playing, the Sky Moves Sideways, is actually very long, and, and um, we split it down into two bite-sized chunks for your program. Right. So we're going to pick it up, basically, from exactly where we left off after <laughs> a count in from Chris. Okay, then. Okay.
The Sky Moves Sideways, phase two, Porcupine Tree, another song live in the last half hour of the programme. Live in session from tonight's guest, the Porcupine Tree. Um, again, another extract from The Sky Moves Sideways is not. What happened there? 
Is that someone coming to the studio on a space hopping or something? <laughs> 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 what is that? Anyway. They probably don't like that. They blend funk, jazz, rock and psychedelia and experimental lyrics, as you'll find out. They're playing tomorrow night at the Cellar on Thomas Street in South Shields, where they'll be complete with an excellent light show. Today, no light show, but some brilliant music. They've even come up to the North East a day early to be our house guests. They've travelled up from London earlier today. The band consists of Steve Wilson, vocals and guitar, Richard Barbieri on keyboards, Colin Edwin on bass and Chris Maitland on drums and vocals and if you recognize the name Richard Barbieri he used to be with the band Japan. They've got a new album out in the summer called Signify. This is their new single Porcupine Tree and Waiting.
Porcupine Tree playing live for us here at BBC Radio Newcastle. That's what will be their next single. It's called Waiting. And they'll be back before five to Pine Tree this afternoon. This is Radioactive Toy. <laughs>
finish. Porcupine Tree playing live for us here at Radio Newcastle. That was the second track from them this afternoon, Radioactive Toy. And you can see them in all their glory, complete with light show, tomorrow night at the Cellar Club, Thomas Street, South Shields.